Taco Life is a life small town simulator. It's very casual with farming, fishing, collecting bugs, crafting, and interacting with villagers. You're building a town in your vision that includes those villagers. Don't worry, I'll explain. Now it's going to be compared to Animal Crossing, but it's different. So the first thing you should know about Hako Life is that the time moves faster than real time. In fact, you can sleep to progress to the next day. And you'll be doing that a lot because a lot of tasks take a full day to complete. You'll also be building a bench like you can see on the screen right now. In fact, here I had to build two of them place them for a villager, and then go back and talk to him to complete the task. The villagers will give you different tasks, like building something and placing it for their house or the town. There's also fetch quests where you have to get them items, or delivery quests where they ask you to give an item to another player. At the end of those, you always get a piece of clothing. That's a little weird, but it's pretty nice. Those quests have a time-limited factor to them. You might have to complete them in two or five days, for example. One thing to note about the time mechanic is that if you sleep for two hours and a character is outside your house before you go to sleep, after that two hours of sleep, they will still be outside your house. So the time is a little weird. There's actually a lot of crafting in the game, but otherwise you might be catching bugs, for example, or harvesting materials by chopping down trees or breaking rocks. There is a mine in the game for you to explore as well. Pretty nice. The game doesn't give you a lot of direction what to do. And I believe that's on purpose because they want you to just to enjoy the world. Talk to villagers, get to know them, design their houses, have them move in, build them new houses, collect materials, explore the world, fish, farm, etc, etc. Very typical for this style of game. So you will be having new people move into your town, but you have to build them a house. Here are the houses available that you can build so they can move in. They range from very simple to more complex and some are bigger than others. Then you get to decide where you want to place the house in your town. You talk to the pig, you move the house to the location where you want it to live, and then you place it down. It gets built in a couple days. After the house is built, you have full control over who can move in. You'd look at the little sign on the house. You can evict whoever's there. You can pick who gets to move in. They instantly move in. They'll bring a few new items, but all of the items already in the house stay there. You also have full control over every item inside the house. You can pick that up, sell it, move it, do whatever you want. So you're designing the house and the villager gets to live there at your discretion. It's kind of nice that they let you pick whoever you want to live there. It's a little weird that they can move in and out so quickly. If you're paying attention to the video, I just moved somebody in, they moved their boxes in, then I kicked them out, then I moved somebody else in. They weren't there, but their new boxes were, and now I'm going to find them on the map. They just instantly spawned on the map. I wanted to point out how little gamification was here, but it's not a problem. Moving on to what you have not seen footage of. Now, yes, there is a clothing store on the screen right now. They move in and it's pretty cool. You can customize your character. But what's missing is any footage of fishing or farming. It's going to take a long time to unlock these. I've played for many hours at this point and I still do not have access to doing those tasks. I thought they were going to be available right from the start of the game and they're not. It's not a problem, but it's interesting that a game in this genre that kind of displays fishing and farming as main mechanics in the game doesn't offer it right away and makes you wait more than five hours to unlock it. Moving on to Mayor Merits, and you're going to want them because Haku Life locks a lot of mechanics behind completing these tasks. You might have to wave to villagers, buy items in the shop, plant trees and flowers. Sometimes the reward is a bag of cash, which is fine. But other times it is a useful mechanic like sprinting. I had to place six items in town to be able to sprint. It seems kind of silly to me. And there are other ones you have to unlock that involve sprinting or playing 45 days or playing eight days to, and waving to 20 people so you could unlock the camera. 
In an effort to give you a sense of progression, they locked a lot of things I want to do right now behind these mayor merits, like customizing the outside of my house. I purchased siding I can't even use yet. Why? I believe that just by playing the game, you will unlock most of these because they're tasks you're going to be doing anyway, but I'm not really a fan of the whole system. Now for the biggest feature of the game, the one that everybody is going to be looking at this game for, and it's custom items. Here I am building a custom table. I had one previously, I thought that was stupid, and then I started building this other one. You can resize, move, shape any item in here the way you want. I could stop building it right here and that would be a table anybody could use. You could place it in the game. Now I don't think they're gonna really be able to use it as a table if I did this, but you do have the opportunity to build some outlandish things. This is absolutely a killer feature of this game. It's going to be amazing for people who want to design every little piece of their town. I did use keyboard and mouse or a controller. Both work exactly the same. However, the whole interface is a bit fiddly. It's definitely something you're going to have to wrap your head around. And of course, with enough practice and patience, you will get there to be quite good at making objects. All of the tools are there. It just ends up that with this kind of limited interface, it's difficult. Think something like Photoshop. It takes time to get used to. But the payoff for your custom items is huge. You can go into Pip's house, tell him you have a table for him, and you can take it out of your inventory and place it right in his house. Here is my weird custom table with a triangle in the middle. There's no way this table would stand up in real life, but I wanted to make something crazy. Boom, my custom item in the game. It's a little short for a table. And that's because I didn't turn on any of the guides. I didn't know at the time that they existed, but they are super helpful for crafting a table that you'd want at person height. Also, you can share items with other creators online. This is somebody's online store you can go to, download their designs, and then build them in your own town. This is how I know the tools work, because these are some incredible pieces that I can download and put in my house. Before finishing up this video, I wanted to show off the character creator. There are some hairstyles available, and then you can move on to the colors and choose any color you want. You can even have a green or red skin color if you desire. Overall, Hako life is good, but it's absolutely not for me. I miss the gamification of finding villagers, and I wish that they had more personality shown inside their houses. I also wish that we could have gotten to the farming and fishing a lot sooner because those are the things I really want to do. Although I did enjoy how the mine was unlocked. If you want to build a town to exactly your specifications and no one else's, then this game is for you. If you want to create custom items that you can share with other people online, then this game is for you. I found it to be an interesting take on the genre. It's the end of the video, and it'd be nice if you could subscribe. Also, maybe consider checking out my Steam Curator. There's a link in the description below. See you later.